Hey from Hong Kong. Hope everyone's well. Uh, wanted to talk real quick about the regional airlines versus the cargo airlines. Um, the differences, there really isn't a whole lot of difference. You know, the only difference being in the U.S., if you're flying U.S. domestic cargo, uh, cargo is going to be typically at night a lot of times and passenger ops are during the day. That's just typical of cargo. Um, when I used to fly bank checks, I wish they didn't even have checks anymore. <laughs> even guys know what a check is. You write on it, it's like, here's 25 bucks, there's your check, and you take it to the bank and they give you the money. That's how that used to work, but now you're just like, debit card. Anyhow, um, yeah, so I used to fly Learjet, Learjet's in the middle of the night, right? Uh, a lot of the other carriers, you know, that are domestic, you know, uh, DHL, FedEx, UPS, um, and, and the ACMI carriers, yeah, most of that stuff's at night, there is some day stuff, and then uh, obviously the passenger stuff is normally at day. But if you start, if you want to go into international ops, uh, you know, triple seven, seven four seven type stuff. Uh, both those are, at, you know, both of those are typically at night. You know, the airlines they leave like L.A. seven o'clock at night, head down to Australia, so you're leaving at night. Um, cargo typically you'll leave early in the morning on international ops. That just because all the cargoes come into the facility in the daytime, they sort it, and then you go out early in the morning. And I'm talking early in the morning. I'm talking, yeah. 4.35 a.m., yeah, who? But at least you kind of can get some sleep the night before. Yeah, that's what it works like. Um, as far as the flying, it's the same thing once you're sitting in the cockpit. There's obviously no difference there. Uh, the difference with the passenger airlines being that you've got a you know plane full of passengers, and if one of them has a medical emergency, um, you know, you got to be prepared to go ditch for that. In turn, and then also you have to brief with the flight attendants before you do that. I used to do 747 passenger stuff in Europe, and... and uh, um, yeah, you know, you get drunk passengers sometimes, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just what it is, you know, cargo doesn't complain, you've probably heard that, uh, but the problem with cargo that passenger has is on cargo we can carry our hazardous materials, passenger airplanes you can't, right? So cargo, you know, I, I, I get a pallet, pallets, hundreds and thousands of lithium batteries that I'm flying over the ocean from Asia to the U.S. You think I like that stuff? No, man, I don't like. I mean, if one catches on fire, then they have a typical, typical. They just start, you know, expanding, and the fire just grows out of control. So, yeah, I figured that if there is ever a fire, if I ever go down in the Pacific, it's probably what the or Pacific or the well, yeah, Pacific. So we're going to Asia, U.S. Um, you know, if you ever see a cargo airplane big jet crash in the Pacific, that's probably because it was a lithium battery fire. And the FAA allows it, so but that's part of the job. The nice thing about the cargo thing that I like is that you know when we show up to the plane, once the cargo is loaded, we just go. We don't have to wait for another inbound plane coming in, um, you know, to wait for the passengers to get on that. As far as pay is concerned, yeah, um, FedEx, UPS, wow, man. I mean, that's like big, big bucks. That's why a lot of guys want to go to work there. You know, United, Delta. The pay is right in the same area. I mean, uh, you know, I've seen where guys say, maybe I'll go fly for UPS for, for five or six years, and then I'll go to go to United. And I'm like, why would you do that? It, it, that doesn't make any sense, because if you have seniority at a company like UPS or FedEx, just because it's cargo doesn't mean it's easier to get hired there by any means. What you're getting paid for when you're flying is not to take care. They're not paying you to take care of the passengers. They're paying you to take care of their $50 million airplane. You know, passengers happen to be in the back. Guess how much that cargo is worth in the back? Just as much, you know. So, um, so, but, you know, th that's it. So you're getting paid to take care of the airplane, not, you know, the p p passengers. It's like, oh, the pilot did this for the passengers. No, the pilot's doing it for him and his family, you know. <laughs> if you're not going to crash, he's thinking about himself, you know, and the passengers just happen to be in the back of the airplane. Sorry, pa passengers, but that's just the way it is. You know, but th th that's what you're getting paid for is to take care of the big jet and operate it safely. doesn't matter if it's cargo or passengers. And again, you know, getting near a city, they want to make sure that you're a super qualified guy so you don't, you know, pile it into a building. So um, when so when people say that, that like, yeah, I'll go to UPS for five years. Well, at your fifth year, you know, you're going to be making 200 some odd grand a year. Why would you leave that to go to Delta, where then you're going to start off at 80 a year, and then it's going to take you five more years to work, wake up, work up to that thing? You're losing your seniority, and then you're starting all over at the bottom of a seniority list. And yeah, there is a big hiring thing going on right now, 
is this going to last forever? No. Just the way that the industry is right now in this pilot shortage is probably going to it's probably going to take them at least five years to recover from this. So, so anyhow, when you're thinking a career, yeah, it's not I'm going to go to FedEx to build some flight time and then go to work for United, the big company. Um, there is no difference, you know, in terms of you're operating a big airplane internationally, you're going to get paid for it. No reason to go from this company to that company. And it's funny because a lot of guys that have been, at, you know, a couple of guys I know that were united for years bailed. You know, they had like 10 years seniority. They bailed and went to FedEx. <laughs> so, other way around, huh? Interesting. But um, anyhow, that's how that works. So, uh, you know, for again, for cargo, um, you know, in terms of being able to get up and get out of the cockpit, yeah, the airlines have some pretty cool things. You know, it's not just the two beds. I don't know every airline's layout, but I've heard of some of the airlines layout that the you know the triple seven and seven four guys are able to get up, and there's a nice little area in the back that they can go to. We have the same thing in the in the triple uh, seven. You know, you you walk in the back, and there's four business class seats and a full galleys. You know, just like you see on every airplane, so you can cook your own food and all that. And yeah, do they cater these things? Yeah, they do. Um, it's a it's part of the union contract. They have to feed you. <laughs> so so and guess what? You eat airline food. So if you like airline food, it doesn't matter if you're flying passengers or cargo, you're still going to get airline food. So anyhow, I hope that I hope that kind of answers the difference between the passenger cargo thing and you know I'm going to go fly for a cargo thing for a while to build some big jet time and go sell it to you to Delta. Nah, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. Once you get hired at UPS or FedEx or you know, that sort of thing. Stay there. <laughs> All right, from Hong Kong, got to go fly tonight. See you later.